I always wondered how much of Elden Ring DLC is foreshadowed in the base game, especially regarding the main character of the DLC, Mikula. In the latest Shadow of the Earth 3 trailer, we were told that Mikula abandoned his fate. But what does that mean? How can someone abandon his fate in the lands between? We know that Ronnie the Witch had to go through a long journey to accomplish that. So how did Mikula do it and is it mentioned in the base game? I dug deeper into Elden Ring and I believe I have found Mikula's discarded fate in the literal way. It's an item and it was in front of us the whole time. Mikola's discarded fate can actually be acquired in the base game. Let me explain. During Ronnie's questline we learn a lot about fate in Elden Ring and how it's tied to the stars. We also meet many interesting characters. One of those is Selvis. During Selvis' questline we are required to retrieve a certain item, the Ember Starlight. This item description reads as follows. If the stars command our fates, then ember-hued stars must command the fates of the gods. Such is the belief that inspired the use of these shards to prepare a most special draft cannot be consumed by mere humans. So this item has close ties to the fate of demigods, but is it in general or is it tied to a specific demigod? And if so, then who? Let's hear what Servus has to say when you deliver him this item. Well, well, you managed to lay your hands on it. The blessed day is finally upon us. Goodness gracious, the way it glistens. Utterly enchanting. To think this was once a demigod's very fate. My, oh my, oh my. It was once the very fate of a demigod. This sentence makes it clear that this was actually the literal fate of a specific demigod. And after Shadow of the Earth 3 story trailer, I think this became more than mere speculation. We were told that Mikola discarded his fate. But this isn't the only evidence that ties the Ember Starlight to Mikola. The first more obvious clue is literally in front of us. Mikula and Melania statue. This statue is actually the only one outside of the Haley tree. If we look around it, we will find 10 sacramental buds. Their description reads as follows. Believed to originate long ago from a strain of buds cultivated with youthful sacramental blood. This item seems really connected to Mikula. I mean, the wording here is very specific. It says it was grown by the means of blood, not just any blood, but youthful blood. Does this ring a bell? We know that the Haley tree is grown through the blood of Mikula, the youthful blood of Mikula, since he is cursed with eternal youth. To me, this plant seems to be the first try by Mikula to grow something out of his blood, which was used later to grow the Haley tree itself. Now, the third clue is incredibly important. During the story trailer, specifically when we are told that Mikula abandoned his fate, we are shown an illustration of Saint Trina, which communicates that Saint Trina is associated with Mikula's fate. But here is the interesting part. This place where we find the Ember Starlight is actually named in the internal files Saint Trina's Hideaway, linking the entire place to Saint Trina. The same Saint Trina shown when we are told that Mikula abandoned his fate. Personally, I don't believe that this is some kind of a coincidence. I think this is indeed the discarded fate of Mikula that we were told about in the DLC. But you may be asking yourself, is fate a materialistic thing in Elden Ring? And in order to answer this question, we will need to go over the nature of fate and its ties to the stars as well as explain the importance of killing Radon in the light of this new discovery. But first, let's talk about the usage of the Emperor Starlight in itself. If you deliver this item to Selavus, he will make a potion out of it. You understand, don't you? That once you have Rani drink my draft, my scheme will come to fruition. And we... 
Well, we'll be in a position to clean the very finest puppet ever crafted. Just imagine the pure elation. Silvus claims that this potion can control a demigod. It can turn a demigod into a puppet. But what does a puppet mean in Elden Ring? Upon entering Silva's secret Berver room, we would find those puppets. Upon examining their state, they look like they are asleep, and we can actually control those puppets, evident by the usage of them as spirit summons. So, sleep and control. The potion made out of this Ember Starlight can put demigods to sleep and control them. Does this sound familiar to you? Because it sure does to me. Sleep is associated with Saint Trina. She puts people to sleep and no one to visit them in their dreams. While control, well... Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. We get this dialogue from the gameplay trailer, but even in base game we can find the bewitching branch. Let's read this item description together. Tree branch blessed with an incantation of unalloyed gold. The Imperian Mikula is loved by many people. Indeed, he has learned very well how to compel such affection. So it's very logical that an item that represents the fate of Mikula would have the ability to control demigods. Now let's go over fate and its connection to the stars. We learn from various item description and quests that fate is tied to the stars. In the past, people used to read their fate in the stars. The idea of stars guiding fate is very old. We know it in real life as astrology, where the position of stars and planets during the exact moment of your birth determines your personality and even if you will succeed in life. Therefore, fate is in the stars. Now, in real life, don't believe this nonsense, but in Elden Ring, it's real. But is it in the metaphorical way or can this be more literal? I believe Elden Ring took this concept from myth and made it more literal. We are told that killing Radon would set Rani's fate in motion. Her fate is guided by the stars. Now when we kill Radon, a shooting star hits the ground, opening the path to Nokron. This shooting star literally guided the fate of Rani. Like literally by hitting the lands between and opening the path to Nokron. Nokron is where we can find the Finger Slayer blade, and the blade says it can't be wielded by those without fate. Also, the two fingers of Rani was probably stuck in space. When we go to the Moonlight Altar, we find Rani down a crater alongside her two fingers. It seems like those two fingers fell from the sky and made that crater. Those are a couple of instances where fate literally hits the lands between in the form of shooting stars and um, falling fingers. Well, this brings us back to St. Trina's hideaway. This place where we can find the Ember Starlight is actually a crater. And the only possible explanation for this is that it was caused by the Ember Starlight hitting the place. Just like the shooting star of Rani opened the path to Nokron. This starlight fell to the lands between and made the crater. This crater was later made into a shrine, not the other way around. So a shrine for Mikula was made around this specific Ember Starlight, further proving the connection between the Ember Starlight and Mikula. But why did Mikula discard his fate and what does Radon have to do with it? We know that Mikula decided to abandon the Golden Order because it can do nothing to cure Melania. This was the dawn of unalloyed gold and he even went as far as making his own tree. He didn't want anything to do with the Golden Order. And this is further proof from the story trailer. We are told in the DLC info that Mikula discarded his Imperian slash Golden Flesh. But abandoning your flesh doesn't change your fate as an Imperian. It's just one of the steps. This fact is proved by Ronnie's quest. She discarded her flesh long ago, yet she needed to do extra steps to finally get rid of being an Imperian. And it was stopped for a long time due to Radon, as we said. So I believe in order for Mikula to truly abandon his fate, he needed to accomplish two things. Discard his flesh 
and literally take out his manifested fate from the stars and abandoning it in St. Trina's hideaway. This fate is associated with St. Trina, that's why we can see her in the trailer being abandoned in a way. So we can come to the conclusion that Mikola's fate was to ascend to Godhood, which is tied to St. Trina, in a way similar to America slash Radagon. The idea of dual genders in the same body, the divine rebus, seems to be an important part of being a god. We can see that in America slash Radagon, and we can even see it in Dragon Lord Placidus X. In an amazing video by Zuli the Witch, we can see the dual gender of the Dragon Lord. One of his heads is male while the other is female. We already made a video about the Divine Rebus and how was Mepula and Melania born. Be sure to check it out after this one. If what we are seeing is true, then I think there will be two Mikula in the DLC. Mikula that we keep seeing him in a vague way and Saint Trina. And we will have to find Saint Trina to learn more of what happened and the real nature of Mikula. But when exactly did Mikula abandon his fate? If the stars are arrested in their place by Radon, then when did the ember starlight fall down? It must be that Mikula abandoned his fate before Star Scourge Radon conquered the stars. But when did Radon conquer the stars? In this illustration here, we can see more God pinning down Radon. And yes, this is 100% General Radon. Don't try to deny it to protect the status of Radon. Morgoth pinning down Radon here doesn't mean he is stronger. A lot of other factors may be in play here. One of the most important is the size of Radon. We can see he is very small compared to when we confront him. This is because he just acquired his shard of the Elden Ring. This war here is just after the shattering. Over time Radon grew in size and this is very important because we know from his remembrance that he learned gravity magic in order to keep riding his trusty steed, Leonard. So if Radon here is still small in size, then that means he didn't learn gravity magic yet. We can come to the conclusion that Radon most probably learned gravity magic after the shattering, while Mikula abandoned the Golden Order way before that. After the shattering when Melania and Radon clashed, Moog kidnapped Mikula from his cocoon in the Halic Tree. Therefore, Mikula's entire journey was made before the shattering or at least around that. When Moog kidnapped him, he was already in his cocoon. He already planted the Halic Tree and was feeding it. Therefore, he was already done with the Golden Order and the Earth Tree. Let's read the description of the incantation, Triple Rings of Light. A gift from the young Mikula to his father Radagon. Now let's read Radagon's Ring of Light. A gift of gratitude to the young Mikula from his father Radagon. And yet, young Mikula abandoned fundamentalism, for it could do nothing to treat Melania's accursed draught. This was the beginning of unalloyed gold. This seems like during the first years of Mikula, way before the shattering. At this time, Radagon was still around and active. So Mikula probably made all of his journey while Radon was yet to learn gravity magic. And therefore he was able to extract his fate from the stars in the form of the Ember Starlight and discard it. But there was a big problem that Mikula wasn't prepared for. While trying to forge his new fate, Radon conquered the stars. He stopped them and therefore just like Rani, Mikula's fate was put into stasis. This interfered with all of Mikola's efforts, his effort to make himself a new body, a new order that opposed the Golden Order. Radon needed to die in order for Mikola to forge himself a new fate, instead of the one he discarded. So he sent Melania to fight and kill Radon at all cost. For a long time I didn't understand why Melania went to such extreme to take down the Star Scourge. I mean Melania's life story is all about willpower and pride. She stood to the Scarlet Rod and never gave up. Millicent herself said that she feels she is a part of Melania. She is her bride that she left when she fought Radon. Of course we are talking about Melania stabbing herself and unleashing the very thing she fought so hard against, the Scarlet Rod. But now we can understand. Melania needed to kill Radon at any cost in order for Mikula to forge himself a new fate. 
It's not just about the eclipse. I thought at first that Mikula wanted to kill Radon because he wanted to provoke the eclipse, which may still be true, but this makes much more sense, especially regarding the DLC. I mean, if Radon needs to die for Mikula to provoke the eclipse in the DLC, then FromSoft kind of spoiled the plot of the DLC. We all know that Mikula wants to bring forth the eclipse to resurrect Godwin the Golden. But in the light of this discovery, I think it's much more than just the eclipse. Killing Radon is essential to continue the rest of Mikola's journey. I hope we are right with this theory as it will solve a big old in-game mystery, as well as shed some light on Mikola's goal in the DLC, and why is Radon required to die to access the DLC outside of the good old eclipse theory. Hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed and tell me in the comments what you think. Until next video, farewell fellow tarnished.